All right, so I guess this is the next project. Admiral briefcase set. That's pretty much all I know about it. Picked it up at an estate sale and it is super dirty. I found it in a basement or in the basement of the house. And the cabinet is all in one piece, but it's very dirty. So I picked it up, wanted to restore it. There's no model number on the back. Um, but I really like the small portable sets. So that's why I picked it up. Admiral. So I don't know anything about this set. I have yet to download the schematic. But first things first, let's take off the back and see what we're working with. Because this, this cabinet is in filthy condition. The uh, handle looks great though. Handle looks really good, a little dirty, but it's not cracking anywhere. But yeah, this is, this is a very filthy set. So it's gonna need a lot of love, but I plan on giving this a complete restoration. But first things first, let's, uh, let's take off the back. Looks like the emblem used to be there for Admiral, maybe. I'm not sure. And the uh, protector, front is glass instead of plastic. I think the 17er, the Philco 17er used a plastic front. I really like the glass one. I feel like the plastic ones are fade over time. This one's pretty filthy, but I just give it a good scrubbing. It should be fine. But yeah, this is a cool model. I like this a lot. Let's see what we're working with on the back. So it's got like a, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but in there it's got like a metal cover. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take this, I mean this, this cord feels terrible too. Uh, let's take the back off and see if we can find a model number inside. Admiral Chassis 15G1B. Let's see if you can see that. So let's see, picture tube is a 19XP4. I don't know if I've seen one of those before. All right, let's get you off the tripod. So yeah, this set looks right about late 50s, maybe early 60s. I say that because of the circuit board. AGC, noise, um, vertical linearity, height. Looks like damper. Uh, horizontal output. All right, well, doesn't seem like the worst, worst set I've seen. You got three big electrolytic cans right here. So you got one big one right there. You got big one right there, four right there, and then two over there. Tuner up here, so you can change the channel from up there. All right, let's go ahead and test the picture tube. This is a pretty short neck. For when I first saw the set, I thought it would be a the 17 DRP4, 17 DAP4 from the Predictas, but it's not. But it is very skinny. So yeah, let's go ahead and. Test the tube. Hopefully it's good news. All right, we got the 19 XP4, 6.3. Socket B, 300 G2 volts. 
All right, it's been warming up for a few minutes. Let's go to shorts, hopefully none. Good, mission, bad. <laughs> but we'll give it a few minutes to, to go up. Hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll go up. We'll see. All right, so the little meter here is off. I checked the cable with the multimeter. It is right at 6.3 volts. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what the emission was again. Yeah, it's just, there's nothing going on there. Man, that sucks so bad. All right, let's see how much it climbs. I'm gonna leave it on for a few minutes. All right, yeah, it's in the bad area. On the sensitive mode, it goes to good. This will still produce a picture. Um, just not a great one. The contrast will be pretty bad. The darks will be very dark. Uh, I'm still gonna restore it. Um, it will produce a picture, not too great. So we'll, let's get into this. All right, <clears throat> so I guess the first thing we should do is get this chassis out to look at it. And for the yoke, a little plug right here so I can unplug that so the, the chassis can slide out without taking off the yoke, that's nice. Um, so yeah, let's take out the chassis and see what we're working with. I believe this is the high voltage rectifier cage. Um, and I'm sure there are other capacitors on the other side of this board. All right, chassis is out. There's a picture tube. Slid out pretty easily after I unscrewed everything. So, I guess we can spin it around. Here's the underside or backside of it. So it looks like all Admiral tubes. So I'm not sure if this thing has ever had work done to it. Which is good news. Um, but yeah, all these caps look original. I'll have to take a look inside the High voltage rectifier. This can dome resistor is looking rough. Um, so if that is open, I can bridge across a new resistor there. Also the sand resistor for 10 ohms at 15 watts. I believe I have a replacement for that. I don't trust the sand resistors, that's all. Electrolytic. Yeah, everything seems all right. So I guess I'm gonna, I wanna clean up the chassis a little bit, make it an easy workspace. I'm gonna clean all the tubes and then see where we're at. I'll film again before I start recapping. Um, but yeah, this is looking all right so far. All right, got the flyback cage open. The flyback looks fine. There is some wax coming off of it. That's all right, other than that, it doesn't look like there's been any arcing. High voltage rectifier, just very dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that. But I still need to clean down the chassis a little more. I've never seen the uh, circuit breaker on here before. But all right. So yeah, I'm just gonna clean up a little more. But yeah, this is looking good so far. Oh, and they are all Admiral tubes. I don't think one tube has been changed since this set came out. And speaking of when it came out, let me try to find the schematic since I only know the chassis number. All right, I guess the next course of action is to start changing capacitors.
I guess starting with the three cans right here. Um, going over the board here, looks like there's a wax cap right here. And then, and then a mica mold. These are not domino capacitors. These are just like a waxy. Um, I'm not sure about this one. San, Gam San Gamo. Don't know how to pronounce it. I think that one's legit. You don't have to change those. Then we have a, looks like a horizontal AFC diode. You see those on the predictors as well. Uh, I've had to change every one that I've ever come across. So, oh, yep, there it is. So that was just two diodes. So we'll see if I have to change that. Probably will, but if it works for right now, it works. So yeah, I guess I'm just gonna start recapping and then I'll switch it on if I see anything worth showing. That's gonna be a pretty straightforward process. All right, looking at the schematic, looks like we have two across the line caps, or I guess one across the line cap before the on and off switch. So as long as the television is plugged in, whether it's on or not, this is going to get a lot of wear and tear. Yeah, so that 047 is gonna have to be replaced with a X2 safety cap. Uh, I don't plan on leaving this set plugged in when it's not in use. So whenever it's turned off, unplug it. So, you know, this doesn't constantly have line voltage going to it. Um, so the dropping resistor right here, a 20 watt 51 ohm, and then a 10 ohm 15 watt. So I believe the 51 watt, or the 51 ohm 20 watt is the candom resistor, I believe. Because there's the other one, the sand resistor is the 10 ohm 15 watt. So let me check my stash to see if I have a 20 watt 50 ohm resistor. And if I don't, I'll go ahead and check the candom, see if it's still good, but it's getting a little rusty. I would like to replace it. All right, I don't have replacements on hand, so I'm probably just gonna order uh, these just to make sure they're not gonna open or short and you know, hurt the tubes here. Uh, got the electrolytics, 150. Got 100, 50, 100. Yeah, so I got a good amount of electrolytics in here. All right, I'm about to go to a little birthday party, so I think this is gonna call it quits for the for today. I'll show you what I did. I replaced two retro electrolytic cans right here. This one's gonna be a little more challenging because we got four in there. Um, replace the electrolytic here, cap here, here. Here, um, one right there. I'm waiting on my safety caps in the mail. I don't have any safety caps right now. There's a 0.1 at a thousand volts and also another 0.1 down there with a thousand volts, which I don't have uh, the 1000 volt one. Also looks like we have an 047 at a thousand and an 047 at 1000, which I had to order because I only have it up to 630 volts. Um, measured this sand resistor, test fine. This one is measuring around 7 million ohms, so something's going on with this, but I have a replacement on the way. Yeah, this one is just toast. So I got a replacement here on the way, a replacement for this on the way just to replace it. Um, and then I got the 1000 volt caps on the way as well. So yeah, that's a little update right now. All right, so I've realized uh, these caps under here are very hard to get to. So we got one right there, one right there, right there. You have one up in there, another right there, another right there. Uh, also one back there, you can sort of see it. Uh, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. So there's eight capacitors in there that are very hard to get to. Uh, Cause I am not removing the high voltage box. This can't move. This can't come up. There's too, there's too much stuff connected to it. I, I don't know what to do right now. I guess finagle my way around and see if I can get to it. That's a, that's really shitty that they had it up that way. Man, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. But I did get the two new capacitors in here. Here is the 51 watt that took this one out of out of circuit, and then the sand one, 10, 10 ohm one. All right, did I say 51 watt? I mean, not 51 ohms. And I got a little terminal strip, it's hooked back in. So those are good. I just need to replace these. Okay, that took way longer than it should. Probably two hours just trying to get to all of those capacitors way back in there. Yeah, that took a lot of work. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this back into the chassis. Everything has been replaced, or all the all the paper caps, all the electrolytics. These two resistors for right now, power resistors. Um, and let's give this a slow power up. All right, we are going for a power up. So I got it hooked up on the Variac, turned all the way down. Let's turn the set on. We'll turn the volume almost all the way up. And let's start, just start, so it's already pulling 10 watts from this. So let's see. I'm just gonna jump to 30 watts. All right, it's pulling around, or at 30 volt, we're at 30 volts right now. It's pulling around 10 watts. Just make sure it doesn't, the watts don't jump to anything crazy. All right, we're at 60 volts, around 27 watts. All right, I'm starting to see filament voltage. That's good. All right, let's keep it going. Around 37 watts. 90 volts. I don't know how many watts this set's supposed to use. This have around 100 volts. All right, we're at right at 117 volts. We're around 70 watts. I'm not hearing anything. So looking back at the schematic, you can see from the plug goes to the RF choke, and then that 51 ohm resistor goes to all the tube filaments, and then it goes to a circuit breaker on the back of the set. So I'm wondering if that circuit breaker is just open because I've pressed on it. It's right here. So I pressed on it and nothing seems to happen. All right, I whacked it on the back on the circuit breaker and it seems to have closed it. So we'll go ahead and try this again. Volume up, brightness up, all the good stuff. Let's just slowly crank it up again, I guess. So we're at 60. Right around, well, minus the Variac, around 32, 31 watts. Let's go to 90. change. Oh, oh, 
here we go. That's a great sign. Let me turn it down a bit. Ooh, I'm hearing some hissing. Oh, wait. Wait, am I? Oh, I am. I'm hearing something. Doesn't sound too great. Sounds like that flyback is hissing. Um, we got a picture. That's good news. Around 100 watts. It does sound like something's hissing now. So let me get my high voltage probe. So I'm on the outside of the cup right there. Getting around 8K volts. I can't tell if that hissing is coming from the high voltage cage or not. I wonder if there's a horizontal drive because I don't think it's supposed to be hissing like that. I can't tell if that's okay, but let's see what we got coming off the picture tube then. Around nine to 10 K volts. that stop it? I felt like it... I don't want this leaking. Unless the tube isn't grounding. This little wire over there that grounds the tube. I don't want that high voltage to be leaking out anywhere it shouldn't be. But let me turn on the pattern generator. Okay. Okay, that didn't sound good. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting some in the high voltage section. That's not supposed to happen. Contrast. Oh, did not like that. No. I need to get this to a reliable channel for the pattern generator just because I don't know. set for a second. Mm, that looks oddly familiar. Maybe not that horizontal does not like it. Yeah. 
Yep, there's something going on with that, uh, that horizontal section that it does not like. I should not be getting that hissing. So, let's see here. So unfortunately, all we have to really work with is this. So, what could be doing this? Horizontal hold, contrast. All right, so I'm going to see where this hissing is coming from. I don't think the hissing is coming from the high voltage rectifier under it. So it says we're getting around, well, I'm at 90 volts right now. Am I supposed to be getting voltage from not even the anode cap? Maybe. Not down there. Yeah, it should not be making that sound. I almost want to put some dielectric, dielectric grease uh, around the inside of the anode cap because um, maybe some of the high voltage is escaping somehow which is not good. Because it's definitely coming from here. Yeah, I might put some dielectric grease around the um, inside of the anode cap and see if that does help sort of seal it in there. Okay, so I think the horizontal is very off. So when I start to turn it, see it's like almost locked into place. It's getting there and then it starts doing that. So let me figure out where the, not the horizontal hold adjustment, but the actual uh, horizontal coil. And maybe, so let me put the horizontal sort of in the middle if I can without it going, okay. I can put it about right there. And then let me, let me try to find the coil here. So we got, Okay, I'm done. That was talking about the tube. I need a coil adjustment. Let's see if we can find it here in this bevy of information. You know, I talked up a big game about this horizontal AFC diode and I never checked it. So that's right there. So I'm gonna take this out and test it because that could that could affect the hold of it. And I've seen these go bad all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this. So I think we're getting like a horizontal fold over. Let me get the vertical sort of locked in if I can. Hmm, this is a tough one. So see, it's, there was, right there, you kind of saw it, it was like two, it's like two layers that are shifting back and forth differently. So I see that. Um, I, re I really need to find that oscillating coil. I mean, maybe it's not, maybe I just need to, yeah, I need to find that coil. All right, so I went ahead and downloaded this schematic. I had to buy it from Sam's website because I couldn't find any free version online and this one is actually the entire schematic for this model. So, yes, this coil right here is the horizontal coil. Um, 
see, I'm gonna try adjusting that and see what I can get if I can get the squealing to stop. I've had that happen on the Predicta. And I think adjusting the horizontal coil did help that, but we shall see. Nope, other way. Okay, so it's not that. So let's keep it going. Ooh, that should have been it. I mean, that looks about right. Let's see if we can, uh... All right, where are the horizontal lines? <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, this has both. Okay, Jesus Christ. All right, let's change this horizontal even more. I don't know which way I was going before. All right, this, it has to be this then. But where's horizontal? Well, I mean, where's vertical? Oh, hold on. Okay. So I don't really have, I have vertical sink there or horizontal sink. Man, this is frustrating as hell. That's part of it though, I guess. Where is it not locking at now? Yeah, I'm not getting the hissing back there anymore. Maybe the dielectric grease really did help. Or I could be just fibbing, fibbing myself. Okay, well, this is it. This is the correct horizontal frequency. So it does lock in there. Uh, it looks like vertical does lock too, possibly in the wrong spot. But that's all right. So definitely something else is going on. So <clears throat> it's the next night. After looking at the schematic, the mica mold I took out of here, this one, is a 3900 picofarad, and I put in a 1500 picofarad. So that needs to change. <clears throat> Need to change that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the uh, video detector diode. I believe that's somewhere in here. Uh, I need to search around. I'm taking the board back out. Uh, let's see what else. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the horizontal AFC with uh, two diodes and see if that helps our horizontal section. <clears throat> um, it's possible that this is messing up the horizontal uh, I don't think to the degree that I'm seeing, possibly, I'm not sure, but we're going to pull this board back out and uh, get the correct components in there. So here is the <coughs> video IF section, and there is the detector diode, video detector diode. Um, I don't care if it's good or bad, I'm just going to take it out and replace it with a, I think it's 1 in 34. Yep, that's it. That's the new detector diode. That thing is super tiny. Let's look at the size comparison. Jesus. I mean, it's going to be the other way, just like that. Okay. Now I remember, I had it set to the one, the one checkerboard pattern. 
So that is the image. Okay, that makes more sense. So what doesn't make sense... Let's see, because I can't really get an image that way, and that high voltage is squealing. A little bit rough around the edges, Jesus Christ. So yeah, we got some problems here. We got some problems. I'm not even sure what to really address first. So, the uh, fine tuning really jacks up the image. Okay, this is a very temporary fix. So let me explain what I did. I put the original uh, Michael Mold cap back in. This is the best I can get the image currently. I'll, remember, it is a very tired tube, so the contrast is going to be a little bad. Um, but I think the problem lies with the tuner. Right now, I am in between channels. Yeah. Like, on the tuner, I am in between two channels. Not with the fine tuning, but literally. Because when I flip to an actual channel, I get nothing. So I gotta balance it. So, this is on channel two. And I'm getting like a negative image. And then with this one. Okay, there we go. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, that's about as good as I can get it. Oh, there we go. All right. I wouldn't call this a permanent fix, but something's definitely going on with that tuner I gotta check out. So from afar, image looks okay, but it's definitely not a, a permanent fix. Okay, here's a little update. I did clean the tuner, and when I, when I pull this down, I get some great contrast, but when I let it go, oh wait, there we go. I mean, it's it's very touchy, but that's that's the best image I've gotten so far. That's definitely the best image I got so far. But then again, I I just need to take a closer look at the tuner, maybe open it up, make sure. I mean, something's definitely touching something it's not supposed to be. So. I guess I'm gonna open it up and see what I can do. All right, so I actually opened up the tuner and sanded the little contact points that it had um, <clears throat> in there. I still have to go in between channels for some strange reason. But as long as I'm in between channels, it's looking all right. So, I mean, the image looks pretty good. I mean, I still gotta clean the front glass and everything, but it's, it looks fine. This does look good. I'm gonna look into the tuner issue and see if that's fixable. But <clears throat> as of right now, I don't actually have a problem with it because it still seems to be doing its job. And I'm sure once I get the glass cleaned up, the sharpness will look a lot better because this is pretty dirty. What's going on? Oh no. Oh no. Have you lost your minds? All right, so please disregard my workspace. 
my dirty workspace. There's the back, I just clean the back up. Chassis. Here's the other chassis. This cleaned up very nice. Handle looks a lot better. There's the picture tube in the front. Let's put all this back together and see what we get. This is gonna look very different from when we first got it. Wow, what a difference that is. You know, look at this cabinet now, man. What happened to that bird? Ah! Well, I'm dying of hunger. Oh, what happened? It even feels just smooth. Man, look at that. I mean, I still have to uh, keep the channels in between each other, but that's a that's a fine compromise. So I literally just put this back together into the cabinet. I still need to put the back on and everything. But yeah, this is coming along great. God, this cabinet looks so good. Could you imagine buying this new? Man, that's a huge uh, picture tube as well. Food? Where really? Food. What are you talking about? Oh, Great movie too. Man, I just can't stop watching it. This is just great. So you get some static here. I'm sure that's just some interference from the, um, from everything plugged into the walls and everything. This is a, my workspace is just awful right now. I just have way too many sets in my possession for where I'm living. Two bedroom apartment. But man, this is, this set's just looking great. I think I'm going to sell this at some point. And look, even the uh, picture tube. I can turn it down a lot. You still get a great picture. So yeah, this picture tube still has a lot of life in it. Even if a test pad just needs to be woken up a little bit.